Hello, and welcome to this video on designing and editing GDS files. In this video, we're going to continue looking at the cell hierarchy structure of GDS files. To start with, we've got our uh, GDS file set up here with, a, with two cells, uh, the device cell, which is making reference to cell one. Cell one is just a box, and the device cell uh, is an array of these cell one instances. You can see I've got a five by five grid here of cell one, and five by five with a spacing of 20 by 20 microns. Just a nice starting point here. What I want to show you first here is uh, a common thing that I see people trying to do with, with uh, GDS files that is often done incorrectly. And what we've been talking about so far is making arrays of uh, shapes. So I've got a square here and I've made an array of squares. When people go to try to make uh, holes, an array of holes, of square shaped holes, they tend to kind of run into some problems or maybe not do it correctly. So that's what I want to talk about here first. So let's see kind of the wrong way to do it first. Uh, before, before I even get into the right way or the wrong way, let's make a new layer so we can kind of visualize this easier. I'm going to make a layer two and name it oxide. What I'm going to do is draw a box around these metal squares. And so I kind of want to take this blue oxide box that I've just drawn or blue layer two box and I want to make square shaped holes in it where each of the squares from layer one were. And so intuitively the first way you might want to do this is to take the difference between these two shapes and that's kind of not the right thing to do on this scale. But let's see how you might do that anyways. So you can't take the difference I will say between these cells and the shape because they're two different things because these boxes here are actually instances of boxes and this blue box is a box, Kaleo doesn't really know what those two things are, how to take a difference between a cell and a box. So what we'd have to do is convert all of these cell one cells uh, into their boxes. And there's a way we can do that. So let's go ahead and select the array. And in edit selection, we can do flatten instances. And this is a, a, a button that I recommend you use with great care. Because what you're doing with this, with this key is to remove all of the hierarchy structure from the selected objects. So it can greatly increase the file size of something you're working with. If you select kind of your entire file and try to flatten it, it can cause all sorts of problems. So use this with great care. Uh, and in this prompt here, I'm going to flatten all hierarchy levels. I'm going to remove all hierarchy structure here. And you can see on the left, cell 1 is no longer a subcell of device because it's no longer referenced in the device cell. We've gotten rid of it. These boxes are now just boxes. I can click on one and it's now a box. It's not anything to do with the cell one uh, cell anymore. And at this point, I could select the oxide box, hold shift, and select the other boxes and do subtraction of this from first. Oops, we'll do that again. Subtraction, others from first, and there we go. So now you can see if I turn off metal one, I've got this blue layer two box, bluish purple, with these holes in them where the layer one was. So I've, I've accomplished my goal, but kind of incorrectly. And in doing so, I've created one giant polygon for this uh, layer two, which I don't think is the best way to do it. I mean, here, this is a five by five array. This is only 50 microns wide. It's not really a big deal. But if you were trying to do this on a large scale or make many instances of this, you'd start to run into some problems. So let's undo a lot of what we just did. I'm going to control Z, uh, undo the difference, undo the flattening. So now I'm back to having cell one as a subcell of device. And I'm going to even get rid of this uh, large oxide square that we drew earlier. And I'm going to dive in and have a look at cell one directly. So I'm going to show as new top of cell one. And we're just seeing this individual square here, the contents of cell one. With layer two selected, I'm going to go ahead and draw a box here. So now I'm going to show you how I would recommend you do this instead, how to, how to create this array of holes in a much smarter way. So I've drawn a box around the original box with layer two. Let's just go ahead and clean up the size here. I'll make it 20 by 20. And it's still centered on the first box. And that looks good. And now I'm going to do that same thing again. I'm going to subtract this red layer one box from the layer two box. So let's do that. And now if I turn off the metal layer, 
I've got the hole in the uh, layer two. Let's jump back to device, show as new top, and now we've got a nice array of holes where each of these holes is actually arrayed in addition to the metal being arrayed. So this is a much more efficient way to accomplish this holes uh, array of holes is to literally make an array of holes, make an individual one, and then create an array of it. It'll be a lot easier and uh, it's going to greatly reduce your file size and complexity of what you're doing. Great. Okay, so now, now that we've kind of talked about that, the other one thing I want to talk about is um, kind of some of these other functions here that we can do with our cells. But first, let's, let's make a new cell. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, chip. And I'm going to instance that device cell. Let's make an array. Um, how about a 5x5 five five array with a pretty big spacing? 200. Zoom out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's say we're kind of building up in our hierarchy here. We're making more of our final device. I'm just going to turn off the oxide just so we can see the layer one. Now let's say um, in, in this pattern here, when I'm starting to actually go to the tool to pattern this, I don't want these all to be identical. What if I want these last two columns here to be somewhat similar, but maybe I want the boxes here uh, to be larger or smaller? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't want to have to redo all of this from scratch. I want to just kind of copy what I have and make some changes. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and select the device cell here, and I'm going to select copy. Right click and select copy, and it's going to ask me whether I want a shallow copy or a deep copy. And the distinction here is important. It's saying for shallow copy, it's not going to copy any of the subcells. And for deep copy, it will include the subcells. So what that means is that if I do a shallow copy, it's going to make a new cell, but it's still going to reference the original cell one in that new cell. If I do a deep copy, it's going to create a new cell and a new device or cell one cell. So it's going to create all the new cells that it needs, um, depending on what level of the hierarchy selected. And that's what I want to do here. I want to do a deep copy. Let's click OK. And then I will paste that here as well. And so you can see we've created a device uh, dollar sign one and a cell dollar sign one. So both of these are different than the device and, and cell one cells from earlier. Let's go ahead and make a modification to this new uh, cell one dollar sign one cell. And let's make it this a little bigger, uh, just in the width. And now we'll go back to device one. You can see that one, the change is propagated there. And when I go back to chip, I can then, um, I can modify this array. I could say, let's go ahead and um, make this only three columns. I've gotten rid of those last two columns and I could then create a new instance where I want only two columns. And here I will reference device one. I'm going to reference that new cell. Line that up. And now I can have both of these side by side. My new copy of device uh, one and cell one along with the old device and cell one. Uh, so that's a good way to kind of make some different copies of cells without having to do all the work of starting from scratch. Use that copy feature. Decide whether you want the deep copy to copy all the subcells or the shallow copy, and you can do um, make use of whichever one is useful in that particular case.